Hi. <laughs> so this is Wilderness Sunday. Um, let me get a special painting from Greg Phillips. It, uh, and I have to admit, it does not match my internal vision of the wilderness, but um, it's probably more biblical than what's in my room. Um, we know that, that Jesus spent 40 days and nights in the Judean desert. Um, and he further commanded his followers to come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Um, but I was raised in the Midwest, okay, not in the desert. Um, the closest uh, wilderness areas that I know about are on the Canadian border. The, the Iowa Royale National Park is, is technically a wilderness area, and as is the Boundary Waters community area. And, and I've been to all of those places several times. Um, in fact, uh, Elaine and I were there once, and, and she still remained married to me. <laughs> um, and, and we're both life, lifetime members of the Sierra Club, which is uh, founded by John Muir. who besides being the founder of the Sierra Club was uh, the guy who talked uh, President Teddy Roosevelt into the National Park Service uh, on a camping trip in Yosemite Valley. So, um, one of the things I remember about my first trip to Boundary Waters is, uh, of course, the water. And by that it's not the beauty of the water, but you didn't have to treat it. <laughs> okay, you scooped it up in the water and drink. And I did that for like a week. And nothing happened to me. Second trip, the rangers tell me, oh, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> it's complicated, it's more complicated than structures for treating the water. Flash forward the current day, um, there's now a debate, 2017 going in. Um, there's mining interests that want to mine copper immediately adjacent to the boundary waters. Um, with, of course, the byproducts of the mining going into the water. So, um, in this argument, by the way, is trained to political. There are, you know, Republicans and Democrats on, on both sides of this. Uh, some are representing the mining industry, some are representing tourism and fishing. So, that's, that's, current, that's currently what's going on. Um, in our closest wilderness. Um, what's going on with me personally is, of course, Elaine's uh, contracted illness. And I mentioned to, I think it was sometime last year that Pastor Sally said, oh man, I need to get away. <laughs> and I'm really missing my trips to the canoe area. And she points me to this book, Renewal in the Wilderness, which is really great. Um, and it's, it's written by actually a chaplain in Evanston, Illinois, who leads trips to the Boundary Waters. And, and he links this to all of Christianity and to all the faith traditions. He does a whole thing where he relates it to his canoe trips. So, so this is really good. Um, so I would encourage you all to get away when you can. Um, my getaway, my most recent getaway, actually was to another wilderness area in Alaska. Um, Elaine went with me, so we had, to, we had to cheat a little bit since there was a wheelchair involved. Um, but we still saw, you know, breaching whales. We saw black bears in the wild. We saw bald eagles. It was really good, and it um, was really good for me. It was good for her, um, and probably good for you, too. So um, I encourage you all to renew yourselves in the wilderness, as well as uh, taking part in the the battles to protect them. So, thanks. We have our bags. What we're going to do is open them at this time and look at what's inside. What is, does the item in the bag, does it make you think about the wilderness or the outback? What sounds does it make? What might a plant or 
and hold C. Do you think about sand or soil or stones? Now, as we approach the scripture reading, would you imagine that there are wilderness creatures and elements falling out? And what would they say? What would they ask us for? Before I begin the Bible reading, we have an introduction about Paul. Today's story is a part of a letter that Paul wrote to the Romans. Many people lived in Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire. Paul was not always a follower of Jesus. He had been an enemy of the Christians, had put them in prison, taken them to court, and sometimes hurt them. Then Paul heard God's voice speaking to him when he was traveling to arrest Christians, and he became a follower of Jesus. The Christians could not believe that this was the same man. Paul had two names. He's known by the Hebrew name Saul, and also by the Greek name Paul. Paul relied on the Holy Spirit to guide him and give him strength and hope. He wanted to share this with the new Christians. And he wrote a letter. So this letter that I'm going to read, this is a reading based on Romans 8, verses 18 through 27. Dear friends, we are all groaning in pain because we feel the hurt in our world. It seems all the world is in pain right now. It seems the whole earth is filled with sadness. This will not last forever. God has plans for good things for all creation. Though at times we must wait for the good things that God has in mind. When things are hard, it can be difficult to wait. But we are not alone in the way. We have each other, and we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will comfort and help us as we pray and wait, sometimes even helping us to know for what we should pray. The Holy Spirit knows what we need and prays with us. May we all pray that through us, God brings healing and happiness to all. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
portion of the summer. Please pray with me. Loving God, empty me. Empty me that I might be filled with you. That my words might reveal, rather than obscure the meaning of your word. Open all of our hearts to hear the message that allows us to manifest your love in this broken world. Amen. What makes your heart sing? What makes your soul sing? Paul writes to a community that's in chaos. The world around them is oppressive. They don't quite see the way out. And, and he's writing to encourage them. It's dangerous. It's not unlike today's world. Paul writes that the whole creation is waiting, groaning to be free. As we look around at our world, the physical world, natural world, our culture, our human world, there are people waiting, groaning to be free. And Paul writes that sometimes we just don't know how to pray. And so with sighs too deep for words, God fills in those words. Creation is waiting. What are we waiting for? What does the world need? What do you need? It was interesting to hear Russ talk about renewal and wilderness. The sand I have up here is actually from the Wisconsin River. John Lyonberger took a few of us from the Congregational Church in Deerfield on a canoe trip on the Wisconsin River I've never seen so many stars in my life. And so this morning, we looked at the, that morning when we woke up, it was foggy, and as the fog raised and we could see the world and the trees and the river, it was like creation being born in that first moment, if there was such a first moment. We know probably it's dramatically that it's not like that. I invite you to look at your bag, take what's, take what's in your bag. I'll give Leslie back her piece of art. Yes. What? what is it saying to you? Imagine. Perhaps what do you need to hear from it? So I'm going to give you a, just a moment. And then I'm going to ask you to find a partner and to share with someone. If you don't feel like you want to share with another person, you know, I think there's probably a partner in the sanctuary that doesn't, that speaks the words we need to hear. So I encourage you to find someone and take a minute. And then I'll ask you to switch so that everybody gets a chance. I know that Sally's done with, with you before, so. It's not a new experience for you. Good fellowship. So maybe to think where your intersection with the world. I encourage you to make a commitment to one act each day. One act for creation each day. One act that makes your soul sing so that you can keep present to the beauty in the wilderness. You know, studies have shown that that nature is actually is actually a justice issue as well because in urban environments there's greater violence where there are fewer trees. 
And if we can find those little oases of land and get rid of the broken glass and the concrete and put some, some sand, maybe some acorns and something that people find, find it more peaceful. There's less violence in these, these areas. So, for today, an act that you can take is to remember that the bags are compostable. <laughs> and as my bark is compostable, I think, uh, you can either take the contents home or put them in the compost as you leave. And, and one other thought about wilderness, you know, our culture has its own, human culture has wildernesses too. The wilderness of a job loss, a serious diagnosis, the pain of a broken relationship. And during those times, remember to find that place. And if you remember our song from last week, no matter where you go, God will be there with you. Amen. Let Jenny. The head of our scripture reading in my study Bible is future glory. Where is it? We are doing more harm than good to our mother earth. Verse 22 reads, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. If creation was groaning 2,000 years ago, it must be screaming now. Just in the last 25 years, humans have destroyed a tenth of Earth's wilderness. Geologists are considering calling it, claiming a new epoch, the Anthropocene epoch, because of humans' widespread negative effects on the planet. If we don't do anything, the areas of wilderness and outback will disappear, they say, by 2100. With its di disappearance, many species will also disappear forever because we have destroyed their home. Creation is crying out for us to do something. What are we waiting for? The Syria Sierra Club magazine had an article titled, Walled Off, How Trump's Border Wall Threatens the Desert Wilderness. It talked about the resurgence of an endangered species, the jaguar. In the last decade, there have been a string of jaguar sightings in the American Southwest. The jaguar's extirpation came at the hands of usual culprits. Habitat loss from logging, mining, and cattle grazing, sport hunting, and persecution by rangers. And the decades-long U.S. government-funded campaign to wipe out all predators. For a while, jaguars held on in the jagged uplands of Arizona. The last known female was shot in 1963, only 175 miles north of the Mexican border. Jaguars, like other big cats, are intensely territorial. When the cubs reach two years old, the males leave their mother's home territory to establish their own. If there is already a dominant male in the area, Adolescents are forced to disperse to avoid having to fight for turf. Some of these wandering jaguars have hopscotched from one sky island to the next until, unbeknownst to them, they have crossed a politically charged border. Trump's wall would not only affect the jaguar, but at least six other species the apocalypse, the cactus for genius pig, pygmy owl, the Mexican gray wolf, the pronghorn the Kirifakic leopard frog, and the bison. This is just one example of the harm that humans are doing to the wilderness, and I'm not even talking about the devastation that we can do to the planet life in the area with the building of roads to access the wall. Creation is crying out for us to do something. What are we waiting for? What can we do? According to Tim Walber, Republican of Michigan, when asked about climate change, he replied, 
If there's a problem, he, meaning God, can take care of it. For me, that is not an answer. We are being called to take action. The earth is our home, but we do not own it. We are to be caretakers of it and pass it on to generations that follow. As Cleo wrote in the bulletin, the earth is the Lord's. We are called by God to protect the wilderness. I invite you to read her short article in the bulletin when you have a chance. What can we do? My choice is to support the Sierra Club, but if that doesn't appeal to you, there are many other organizations out there that support the environment or preserving our wilderness and the outback. We are not beyond hope. There is still time for us to preserve what we have, but Mother Earth is screaming in pain. We must take action or we can lose everything. According to Dr. James Watson of the University of Queensland Wildlife Conservation Society, we probably have one to two decades to turn this around. One of the biggest losses of the wilderness every year is wildfires. Humans are the biggest cause of wildfires. I still remember growing up the Smokey the Bear campaign about only you can prevent forest fires, and it still applies. Every year there are more than 75,000 wildfires reported in the United States, and they burn an average of 7 million acres a year. Every state is at risk for forest fires, and 9 out of 10 are caused by humans. Creation is crying out for us to do something. What are we waiting for? It is not all hopeless. We can turn this around. But we need to take action today, not tomorrow. I would like to finish off with a, a benediction that was in the seasons this week, or this, for this Sunday, called the Benediction of Hope. Today is the day of creation. Any day that you choose to act, choose to hope, is the day of creation. A day when anything is possible. The future is dark. But it is in darkness that babies are conceived, that seeds sprout, that death turns into life. Celebrate the darkness, because in it, may be hidden new opportunities and new life. Celebrate life. Celebrate your victories. And may the God of hope, the God of second chances, the God of resurrection, bless you with strength and courage today and all the days of your life. Amen.